Hi, we're here with Tom Roach, VP of Brand Strategy for Jellyfish. How are you doing, Tom? I'm great, Keith. Thanks so much for having me. Thanks for uh, joining. So uh, first question, kind of an expansive one. Why is attention so important? It's such a fundamental uh, to communication, particularly brand communication, that in order for people to, uh, to, to buy your stuff in the future, which is the predominant uh, means of brand building, creativity and advertising, you need them to attend to your message. You need them to understand it to a degree. You need to make sure they know that it's your brand and you need to be really memorable. And so that your, your communication has a lasting impact on their memories, can create associations in their minds and can have that impact commercially. So all of those things really are predicated on that initial thing of getting some attention to start with, keeping their attention to a degree. So I, I think it's like in the ABC, which is just the classic way of attention branding communication of, of judging uh, creative communication. It's the first one of those principles. So that's the basic reason it's really important. And it's always been important. I mean, we talk about it an awful lot these days and it's become a, a huge part of the conversation, particularly about measurement, both on the creative and, and media side. But I would say that it's something that the, the kind of legendary ad people of the 60s, they were grappling with this too. Um, when when you get, a, I think it's John O'Toole used to say something like, your, your consumer isn't, you're, you're an uninvited guest in the home of your consumer and you know, they can switch off. They make you magically disappear in any, any second. He was talking about people switching off their, their TVs. These days, I think that quote is completely relevant to the world of scrollability and skippability. And we're just, we're, we're scrolling through our feeds all the time. We need to be grabbing people's attention or they will just scroll right past, they'll flick right past our communication. And so that kind of concept of, 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 of people, they don't need to watch our stuff. They're there to watch other stuff. They're there to be entertained or informed by the people making the, the, the kind of primary content that they're to consume. We in advertising are really just piggybacking on the back of that stuff, slightly parasitical in a way. And um, there's this kind of contract that, that we need to, uh, we, we have with consumers, which is, is we need to engage them. We need to entertain them as much as the stuff that they're there to, to consume. And I think we have actually over the last maybe 15, 20 years with the original advent of digital and the new digital platforms, I think we've slightly eroded that contract and forgotten the importance of grabbing people, entertaining them, et cetera. I think probably and there's a whole debate about this, but I suspect it's because the, uh, the, the initial advent of digital really was used as, it was used as direct response channels where yes, attention is important, but really keeping their attention and entertaining people hadn't been seen as as important, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that, that, um, that situation is changing as we realize that the platforms are also really good for brand building as well. Right. That was an excellent answer. Um, and you know, people have said in this interview and, uh, elsewhere that, Attention's always been important. It's the uh, technology that has sort of caught up to, to mm. measure that. And it makes some people afraid uh, mm. because, you know, there was a um, success of campaign success was predicated on people paying attention. But what uh, technology may be able to tell us is, all right, were they actually paying attention? Yeah. And what do you need to change uh, to get them to do that? Yeah, and it's, it's, it's interesting, this thing about uh, measurement and data. I suspect that um, when you look at the kind of attention curves that a typical channel will have, they all kind of do that. Mm -hmm. There's initially a lot of attention uh, for the first few seconds, then it drops away. The thing that I think is interesting about that is it's also true of TV. It's also true of print and some of the older mediums. Um, maybe Probably conversations too. <laughs> right, exactly. It's true of art, art galleries. It's true of everything. Probably only cinema can get people's attention and, and hold it for really, really significant amounts of time. I bet you if you looked at people, the amount of attention people pay to books, you'll see that most people probably read the first few pages of a book and then put it to one side. So I think it's true of all content in the history of the world that there is a massive drop off in attention and that it starts strong. The difference now is that we have the data to see that. We didn't know before TV was not getting loads of attention. I think people probably assumed that a TV spot would, would hold and maintain attention and keep people's eyeballs glued until the TV show started again. 
we now know that's not true. And I think in seeing the data and seeing the drop offs, I think it's just kind of made us more alarmed by the fact that that people aren't paying as much attention as we thought they were, that in certain digital platforms, they really aren't paying as much attention as, as we would hope or would, would maybe some of the platforms thought they were. And that's I think that's been quite alarming. So I think there's a kind of something's happened in the in the in the in the data and measurement world, which is we've we've basically um become incredibly alert to the fact that uh, that attention is not what what was assumed. And so I think there's been a sort of that's probably sparked the the the, the requirement to get interested in this stuff. And the, I think we always knew that visibility and opportunity to see wasn't really a great mark of how much, you know, how many eyeballs were on the things that we were putting out there. And so the ability to 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 track people's um, uh, you know, eye, eye tracking and facial coding, all that kind of stuff to see whether people are really attending to our communication. That's just provided a, um, a, an extra level of, of specificity to our to our understanding. And so, yeah, uh, technology is providing a, a fantastic opportunity to, to, to understand better how people engage with our with our communications. And that's just that's just really important as advertisers. There's a lot of talk about okay, so what attention are we talking about? There's the idea that, you know, in a vacuum, uh, you produce a piece of content and add. <clears throat> what does that do to someone if you have their full concentration? Yeah. Um, and then you have the idea of, of uh, environments or platforms. So yeah. how does that ad perform in a particular uh, space? Are those both important? Is one more important yeah. than the other? Or, and this sort of, dovetails and to yeah. the next question like people that don't mm -hmm. understand this space what can the entire industry or, or those in, involved in this do to make it easier for them to understand what attention is and how it might differ depending on different situations yeah i think it's really important to um to say that there are many forms of attention um and that this the kind of focused high beam um, high involvement attention is only one kind. It's perfectly possible to communicate with people um, and get a very low uh, attention, low amount of processing from their brains and still do a job for your brand. If you think about the way, I don't know, perimeter boards at a, at a sports event might work or most out of home is just, it's just in the ether. It's just in, a, in the environment. We're not necessarily paying loads of very direct, specific attention to it. Most TV that's consumed, a lot of the time, people are engaged in other activities. There may be second screening. Uh, maybe their attention is more to the sound of the of the of the of the um, audiovisual that they're they're consuming. So I I think it's it's important in these conversations not to to sound like we only care about one form of attention, which is eyes on high kind of concentration attention on a particular piece of content. There are many other ways it, in which it can work. I think when you hear the TV people talk about attention, they're less concerned with the very specific kind of digital video attention that the digital people are really interested in. Um, and you can understand it because in TV world, there's 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 a variety of forms of attention and, and, and they can benefit from all of them. And much of it is less is less concentrated. Um, so I... I, I so that's one way of saying there are many forms of attention and, and we shouldn't be too, too fixed and focused on, on one form. But I can understand in the, in the kind of digital um, advertising context how when people are staring at a small screen in their hand, when they're in various different kinds of environments, um, that the level of and when the, the screen is smaller and the amount of seconds that you've got to play with are shorter, um, that and and of course there's no <clears throat> there's no opportunity for a, a wider number of people to see the screen. It's quite a personal experience. I can understand how why the digital platforms and advertisers in digital spaces would be primarily interested in that kind of attention, which is more kind of um, let's call it high beam attention. It's not you know not even just creative attention. There's visual. There's yeah. audio. You yeah. know how, how do you get how do you create something that gets the person that is watching with no sound on the person mm. who's watching with sound on the person who's gone off to do something but is still potentially taking yeah. in the audio of the the ad or whatever totally. and it's why yes uh linear tv viewing is is on decline uh quite dramatically 
but it still has tremendous benefits and all sorts of other other ways of 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 doing its work for advertisers even if that's you know i, I don't think the tv uh, um, media owners are able to monetize the the audio in the same way and but we yeah. know you know that's a part of the way in which tv advertising works the digital platforms don't have that opportunity to get those different kinds of attention and um, i think there's probably a lot of low involvement uh, processing happening in digital where people are seeing a bit of branding you know maybe a lot of digital display works that way where you're on a, you're on a site and you see you see stuff around the, the the thing that you're mainly wanting to view or read or watch um and and it's giving you an impression of a brand and an impression of of a, the presence of a brand but it's not necessarily delivering you know high attention it's not necessarily delivering like messaging to people but it's still going to be working in a sort of like in a peripheral vision sort of way yeah totally so what just what are some some key uh tips for maybe a brand that um is just starting out or worried that they're you know they're behind uh the competitive set in, in testing attention or... yeah I, I guess I, I yeah you sort of answered the question there which is if if you're if you as a brand or an advertiser uh, are concerned that you're not getting the attention that you're that you think you deserve and your creative deserves the only um the, you know testing it is currently the only real way to understand how it's working if it's if it's not working so well T testing a campaign uh, in in as close to the environment um either a simulated environment or or a, the action environment as possible um i think is 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 the way to do it and and of course it's not just about testing attention it's uh, when you're thinking about the creative testing it's it's are, are people watching it how long are they watching it for what are they taking out of it what are they what are they looking at what are they what are they being stimulated by i'm really interested in emotional measurement understanding the emotional impact of communication because that's when people are um when your communication evokes strong emotions then you've got a greater chance of delivering your your brand message and being remembered and so i, I think and i think it's good that many of the attention uh, testing people don't just test attention they're looking at a broader set of metrics uh, because alone it's like it's like anything if you only focus on one metric and if, it, if that was attention i think you could probably make some wrong decisions about about what kind of creative you want to do what kind of um, media you want to use um and i think it's important that we that in any sort of testing that you are looking at a range a kind of bundle of metrics so it's, uh, you know i guess in this instance when it's creative it's you know it's attention branding emotion uh, memories, uh, associations, all those other things that come with great communication.